chapter 3. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up out of the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore I will visit upon you all your iniquities. Will two walk together, except they have agreed? Will a lion roar in the forest when, they, when he ha hath no prey? Will a young lion give forth his voice out of his den, if he hath taken nothing? Will a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where there is no lure for it? Will a snare spring up from the ground and have taken nothing at all? Shall the horn be blown in a city and the people not tremble? Shall evil befall a city and the Lord has not done it? For the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his counsel unto his servants the prophets. The lion hath roared, who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken, who can but prophesy? Proclaim it upon the palaces of Ashdod, and upon the palaces in the land of Egypt, and say, Assemble yourselves upon the mountains of Shemariah, and behold the great confusions therein, and the oppressions in the midst thereof. For they know not to do right, saith the Lord, who store up violence and robbery in the palaces. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, An adversary, even round about the land, and he shall bring down the strength from you, and your palaces shall be spoiled. Thus saith the Lord, as the shepherd rescues out of the mouth of the lion two legs or a piece of an ear, so shall the children of Israel dwell in Shemaria, escape with the corner of a couch and the leg of a bed. Hear you and testify against the house of Jacob, saith the Lord God, the God of hosts. For in the day that I shall visit the transgressions of Israel upon him, I will also punish the altars of Bethel, and the horns of the altar shall be cut off and fall to the ground. And I will smite the winter house, and the summer house, and the houses of ivory shall perish, and the great houses sh shall have an end, saith the Lord. Okay, let's go back up to verse 1. Uh, one thing about Amos, he's straight to the subject, and very short in his speech. Well, remember yesterday, now, the, we had finished these judgments or these, these burdens that had been put upon the, all the nations, and we're going to find out that it is all the nations, even this burden of the end time. We're going to pick it up. Verse 1, hear the word that the Lord has spoken against you. O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up out of the land of Egypt, saying, So we're not just talking about Judah. We're not just talking about Israel. See, we're talking about everybody. And see, in Israel is these ten nations that have been scattered into all the earth. They, they don't know who they are. Most, most of Israel, and I'm talking about the whole family today, don't even know who they are or their descendancy or nothing of the kind, because God has caused to forget now, and he has scattered them into all the earth. Just like he said, God doesn't let one of his words fall to the ground. Now, you can count on that. Now, if we can't learn anything, we should learn at least that, too. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will visit upon you all your sin. See, so God has... Dunn spoke in this. And he said in the beginning that he, he took Israel now to use as a great example for all the people of the earth. Now, and that's what we're talking about here. God had chose them to use for an example, and that's just what's going to happen now. And he's going to visit all their sins, all these evils and the sins that they've committed. He's going to visit them or bring them back upon them. For an example, three, will two walk together except they have agreed? And the answer to that is no, unless two have agreed, they cannot walk together. But these two, now I want you to witness these that walk together. Why? Because God has told you what it takes to walk with him. Now just who are you walking with? Four, will I a lion roar in the forest when he has no prey? Will a young lion give forth his voice out of his den if he has taken nothing? What does this mean? This lion, this thing that 
cares naturally, this judgment that comes from God, that's what the lion represents. And we remember how Amos started out with God roaring like a lion, and because God is, that's what it is. He's coming up off his prey. Judgment has taken place, see, and it's in the earth, and he's established it now. And this young lion, will he not roar from his den if he has taken nothing? And that's what he does. He takes his prey to the den, and he roars from there to let you know that he's the king, and don't come in here trying to take what's his. And that's basically what we'll find that God is going to do in the end, see, because they have come and have tried to take over what belonged to God. See, and we know what the lion's going to do. Five, will a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where there is no lure for it? Will a snare spring up from the ground and have taken nothing at all? And this lure, these snares, well, of course, you know what they are. And these, they represent the, the words of men. These words of men and how they lay lure in the snare. These, this lure now are these sweet things. What are they promising you? What are they promising you to bring you into their snare? See, because if it springs from the ground, it's going to take you now. And you shall be taken in a snare and in, and from these snares that men have set see these are skillful hunters and these men know where to set the snares and how to set the snares but we'll find out that the whole thing see becomes a snare even to those that lay it six shall the horn be blown in a city and the people not tremble shall evil befall a city and the Lord has not done it that's right God has brought all to evil now because he said, I will visit upon you. And all this evil is by the hand of God. Why? Because it's the punishment for your sins. You have turned from the Lord your God. And this horn did blown. This is the warning. This is the warning. So if the, if the, if the, the watchman blows the horn to wake you up, to sound the warning, uh, are you going to wake up in fear? Or how are you going to do? What are you going to do? Just go ahead and sleep on. Sleep on. Let the enemy come on in. Seven. For the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his counsel unto his servants, the prophets. Got to love this translation. Seven. Perfection. Will God do nothing? That, that, that don't, just don't work quite. Will, for the Lord will accomplish his word. See. The Lord will accomplish the word, is what that should say. Nothing, if we go look, is the bar. The bar. And that means speech, words, something to say. But he revealeth his counsel now unto his servants, the prophets. And I know the King James Version says secret. You know, the Lord don't got no secrets. Yeah. The Lord don't got no secrets. Be obedient. And you'll see. God don't got no secrets. See? He reveals everything to everybody. See, It's like going out and picking up the manna. There's no man can pick up no one any more than anybody else. And it'll do you no good if you do. Say It'll do you no good if you do. That's just a manna. And it's on the ground, and it's, it's the Word of God. If you pick up these, these ten teachings, these ten laws, these, and, and these commandments, these statutes that God has given, you'll see there are no secrets. He makes known His Word, His speech. See, He revealeth His counsel unto His servants. Unto His servants. That's who He makes it known, those that... Obey God, those that do what God says. See, God makes known all his things. Law. Eight. The lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken. Who can but prophesy? For the lion has roared. We have heard the warning from the beginning. See, God has spoken. It's done. Not one word. You're trapped on this wheel. You're going to go round and around. You know, these things, 
they say, well, we don't know everything. Some things are hidden. This is a covering now they've placed over it. See, this is that thing. They're trying to hide it. It's aching, trying to hide it in the tent. See, this covering, this thing he's wrapped it in. It belongs to God, see. And God said, don't do that. So we know what's going to happen to Achan in the end. Nine, proclaim it unto the palaces of Ashdod and upon the palaces in Egypt, or in the land of Egypt, and say, assemble yourselves upon the mountains of Shemaria, and behold the great confusions therein and the oppressions in the midst thereof. What? Proclaim the truth. Who can but proclaim these things that God has brought this great evil upon you? I'm, we're going to call heaven and earth as witness against you. You'll have no excuse. There will be no escape. See, there is no escape. Heaven and earth is called as witness against you. You have made yourself known. You have made your stink go up. And we're going to find that out. These palaces vault Ashdod. This is that great ruin. Ashdod's that great ruin, and the palaces thereof. In the land of Egypt, these palaces in the land of enclosures. Assemble yourselves on the mountains of Shemaria, this place of the drags now. Why up on the mountains? So you can look down and see the city below, these confusions of it. They don't have no understanding, these oppressions, how they oppress the people. They oppress the people, they keep them in ignorance teaching them lies and filth, imputing things unto God that doesn't belong there. See, and they continue in this today. But for a reason. It's for a reason now. For we are the witnesses of it. And the Lord is going to make known. And we're going to see this is the day of great wrath, and judgment from God. Ten, for they know not to do right, saith the Lord who store up violence and robbery in their palaces. Oh, they, they think they're getting away with it, too. But it's, it's just, let them, we're going to let them build it up as high as they can get it, see. Because the bigger it is, the harder it hits the ground. Eleven. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, an adversary even round about the land, and he shall bring down your strength from you, and your palaces shall be spoiled. This king of confusion that's coming. This king of Babylon, because that's what we're talking about. This great judgment God's going to send against these people. And this was the great example of even the end time. How the great king of confusion would come in. But we know what's going to happen in the end soon. It's already been written. He, he's a servant of God. See? He's a servant of God, yes. This great king of Babylon even is a servant of God. Thus saith the Lord, as the shepherd rescues out of the mouth of the lion two legs or a piece of an ear, so shall the children of Israel that dwell in Shemaria escape with the corner of a couch and the leg of a bed. Now the King James Version is going to vary a little bit from this in this scripture. But what we're talking about is, is just the same way. Now let's think of a shepherd over a sheep and a lion's come in or something. And he's, he's grabbed one of the sheep. And he, and he chases the lion off, but it's a little too late. See, the lion's done tore, and only that's left is these two legs. Now witness these, these legs, that which it stands on, and this piece of an ear, this little bit of understanding. Because, see, that's how the children of Israel that dwell in this place of drags is going to escape. This, this little corner of a couch, and this couch is that which you spread yourself out on. You, you you lay on it in the day. You think you make yourself comfortable, this place of rest. But the corner now is the turning place. See, and that, that's what's going to be left, this little turning place, because God's going to bring you to your turn. And this leg of the bed, this leg is, is Damascus. And as we're talking about this Damascus, this place of Damascus, even this place where they, they're going to make themselves a comfortable try to make yourself comfortable in this bed but this Damascus is the place where the sackcloth weaver and, and that's what you're going to be laying in sackcloth before it's over 13 hear you and testify against the house of Jacob saith the Lord God the God of hosts 
Now, listen, because, see, this is what God's saying. These are the prophecies of the end time. This house of Jacob, they've been scattered into all the earth. It's a punishment of God. It's already written. See, and they've been led astray. And it's time to reunite, see, this time of the end when the house is reunited, see, under the authority of God, not the authority of anybody else, see, under the authority of God and his law that he gave. See, this is the authority that's going to rule in the end time. There's, there's no man going to rule. Take it to the bank. Fourteen. For in the day that I shall visit the transgressions of Israel upon him, I will also punish the altars of Bethel, and the horns of the altar shall be cut off and fall to the ground. And this, these altars at Bethel, we know what they were. These were those instead of altars. This, this alternative altar that Jeroboam set up there. Bethel, the house of this mighty one. I often refer to it as God, but it is the house of the mighty one. And these horns, this is the strength of the altar, this power that it had. Had, I want to use it in a past tense because it's coming, going to come to pass. They're going to be cut off, see, and fall to the ground. Wham, they're going to be useless. And that's what we're going to find out, see, in the end. How God is just going to make the power of it. And everybody's going to be brought to weakness, defenseless against the word of God. Because the law of God is going to be a fire that burns all these great places down. 15, and I will smite the winter house with the summer house. And the houses of ivory shall perish. And the great houses shall have an end, saith the Lord. It didn't say anybody going to be happy. It didn't say anybody's going to have a, a great sunshiny day. No, God said, I'm going to smite the winter house. Oh, this place where you think you go and when the winter comes and make yourself warm and keep yourself there. In this summer, the house where you, you cool yourself in, in the heat and shade yourself now. God's going to smite both your houses. You, there is no place you can go and flee from God. These houses of ivory, those houses that you've made white, those houses you've tried to set up to make white, to exalt yourself somehow with this, with your silver and gold, with your polished ivory palaces, the great houses, these great houses even, these Houses at the end of every street, these houses at the end of every corner, these houses on the hills, these houses under every pleasant place. See, even all these houses are going to come to an end, saith the Lord. See, God never said you could build you a high place. Who told you you could? Great judgment's coming. God's coming. Somebody's prayed for this day. And now it's come, see. God has brought this all upon you. I got to move on to chapter 4.